Hey everybody, welcome back to this episode of Coffin Analytics. Today we got a really special episode. We're gonna go over the top 10 formulas in Excel. But first, I wanna point out that in another video, someone mentioned that my Excel screens were too small and were kinda hard to see. I've blown them up, I hope that is easier for you to see. Our data set is a list of fruit and how much of that fruit that I have eaten on any given week. Ten. If statement allows you to make logical comparisons between value and what you expect, and then it returns a custom text string based on whether that statement is true or false. So what I mean by that here is, let's say if banana is in cell C8, then we'll return the text string true. And if that statement is false, then we'll return the word false. There we go. So it's, it's a really logical syntax. We just have our logical test here. This is the statement that we wish to determine whether it is true or not. And then here is our statement, uh, if this is true and else if it is false. So since banana is in, cell C7, it returns true. If we took this out, it will change to false. That's all there is to no. it. Right, the next function is our ifs function, and it's kind of like the if statement's older brother, if you will. It's a bit more powerful, and it allows us to check whether one or more conditions are correct and take the place of multiple nested if statements. And it allows for a much smoother, cleaner syntax than doing if, 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 if. So let's take a look at how this will work. So let's take an example from our data set here. And what we're gonna wanna figure out is whether I'm eating enough bananas. If I've eaten more than five bananas, I'm gonna say that I'm doing a good job. If I'm eating fewer than five bananas, then I'm gonna tell myself that I need to eat more. So we can do ifs and then C7 is less than five. And I will say eat more bananas. And I'm first doing my logical test here. If C7 is less than five, here's the value if it is true. And then I want to enter my second logical test here. If C7 is greater than five, then I'll just say, good job. And since C7 is less than five here, it's telling me that I should eat more bananas. So let me change this now to six and it's telling me good job. So that is ifs. Hey. The and function tells us whether all conditions in a statement are true. So the way that we use and is we can type equals and, and we wanna know whether says mango, and we also want to know whether C13 says apple. That statement is true because both of those conditions are true. If we change this here to something else, it's now gonna tell us false because C9 is equal to mango and C13 is equal to apple. So both of those statements need to be true in order for and to evaluate to true. If they're one of them is false, then the statement evaluates to false. So the or function is a function to determine if any of the conditions in a statement are true. So let's say we want to determine whether C8 is equal to pair or C13 is equal to banana. The statement will evaluate to true because only one of these is true and that's all that it takes. If both of these statements were false, then this would evaluate to false. Six. Sum if is a really powerful function that sums up values in a range that meet criteria that you specify. For example, let's say I wanna sum up the total number of peaches in, in column D here, right? So I've got peach here and I've also got peach here. So 32 and eight, you'd expect the output to be 40, okay? So let's say we have our sum if formula and this takes three arguments, the range, the criteria, and the sum range. And I'll go through each of those. So the range here is gonna be in C. This is where we wanna look at. Our criteria is peach. 
And then we want to sum up anything that matches that criteria in column D. And the total is 40 because we have 32 here and 8 here. If we added another, then it now becomes 48 because you've got peach here, peach here, and peach here. So 32 plus 8 plus 8 is 48. The sum if is really powerful. I hope you get some use out of it. Five. And now we come to VLOOKUP, the granddaddy of all Excel formulas and the formula that seems to find its way to job requirements uh, from Boston to Budapest. It's the, uh, the skill that employers always seem to require. So we're gonna take a look at VLOOKUP here real quick. This is the function that you use when you need to find things in a table. We're gonna type equals VLOOKUP. If I could type, it would help. This takes four arguments, the lookup value, the table array, the column index number, and the range lookup. So for our lookup value, we're gonna type uh, strawberry, because that's what we wanna look up here. The table array is our, our whole table here, C and D. Then our column index number is gonna be two, and then we're gonna use false. We always use false. I've never ever seen anyone use true in 17 years in, uh, in banking close parentheses there and that returns four because there are four strawberries in this list. If we change this to apple, it will now change to seven. There we go. That's it. VLOOKUP is really easy. Four. HLOOKUP is the other and slightly less loved lookup. This looks up items that are horizontal. That's what HLOOKUP stands for. It's a horizontal lookup, whereas VLOOKUP is a vertical lookup. So to use HLOOKUP, it takes the same arguments, so lookup value, table array, row index number, and range lookup, so those are the same four inputs, but this way we're going to return uh, the items in a row as opposed to in a column. So let's take Blackberry, and for our table array, we're going to do the same thing here, and we're going to return two, and false. So we can see that there are nine blackberries in this table. Let's change this to pair really quick, and that should output six. There we go. HLOOKUP doesn't seem to get used quite as often because VLOOKUP uh, looks up things from column to column to column, whereas HLOOKUP looks up from row to row to row, and that doesn't seem to be quite as useful, at least in my experience, as, as VLOOKUP. Um, but if you've got a great use case for HLOOKUP, I'd love to hear about it. Put it in the comments below. Three. XLOOKUP was released in 2019 by Microsoft, intended as the function that replaces all those other lookup functions that came before it. With XLOOKUP, you can look in one column for a search term and then return a result from the same row in another column, regardless of which side the return column is on. So that really solves one of the major limitations of, of the classic VLOOKUP, right? Because with VLOOKUP, only ever look from left to right. And if you wanted to go right to left, came up against one of the shortcomings of VLOOKUP. XLOOKUP resolves that. So let's look at the syntax here. So we'll type equals XLOOKUP. And then this takes a couple of extra arguments. So lookup value, lookup array, return array, and then the text string to return if the value is not found, then your match mode and your search mode. So let's take a look at each one of these in, in turn. So for our lookup value, let's type mango. And then our lookup array will be column B and our return array will be column C. So it's breaking out the lookup array and the return array. In uh, VLOOKUP, you only have one, uh, one index array. And then the value, if not found, uh, we'll just say not found. And then the match mode, I tend to always do exact match. And then I do one because I want it to search uh, first to last. So this is good. So we've got seven because mango is seven. That's the value that corresponds there. If we change this to blueberry, it will then return eight. So I hope you consider using uh, XLOOKUP because XLOOKUP is really, really powerful. And it kind of combines an element of if into the end of the statement as well. Two. If error is a really powerful function to return a custom 
error when a formula generates or throws an error, but a standard result when no error is detected. So you commonly see if error used in conjunction with the VLOOKUP, because it's a way to trap, uh, trap an error when the VLOOKUP doesn't return uh, what you're expecting. So we can say if error, and the, this takes two arguments, the value and the value if there is an error. So let's, let's do something nonsensical. Let's try to divide pair by four, right? That doesn't make any sense because we're trying to divide a text string by an integer. So there's my custom error message, and then I'm gonna close parentheses here, and this returns an error, right? Because we tried to do something that makes absolutely no sense. But if we tried to do something that did logically make sense, then it just returns the uh, result. So we're dividing uh, D8 divided by D10. Uh, so six divided by four returns 1.5. So that's how you use if error. One. And here we come to index match. Index match is a nested function that does exactly the same as VLOOKUP, but resolves one of the limitations or shortcomings of VLOOKUP by being able to look up right to left. So let's take a look at the usage here. So we'll type index. Our index is our whole table here, so that's columns B and C. For our row, we're going to use match, and then we need a lookup value. So let's do pineapple. And our lookup array will be column B, because that's the column that we will find our lookup value in. And then I'm gonna do zero for exact match and then I'm gonna use two as my column number in my index because our index is B and C. I wanna return the second column in that index, close parentheses there, and that returns five. So that's how you use index match. It's a really powerful function, but it's been largely, I think, superseded by the XLOOKUP. I think the XLOOKUP is probably uh, superior to index match in just about every way. So I would encourage you to use that, but if you do wanna use index match, it's still a great function. I know I said we were doing a top 10 countdown today, but no uh, video of Excel functions would be complete in 2022 without discussion of Lambda functions. Lambda functions, as you might know, became generally available from Microsoft in January of 2022. So let's talk about what they are. Lambda functions are functions that allow you to create custom reusable functions, which is a new feature that previously did not exist. It's really cool. So let's take a look at how we can use them. Let's say I wanna create a function that tells me on average how many strawberries I eat per day. I would need to take cell D10 and divide it by seven, right? So equals this divided by seven. So on average, I eat about 0.57 strawberries per day, okay? But how would I do that? I'd use a VLOOKUP. So strawberry. And my table array is C and D. I wanna return two and then false. That gives me four strawberries. And then if I wanna know how many I eat on average per day, I divide that by seven, 0.57 strawberries per day. But what if I don't wanna retype this all the time? This is a little bit ugly, so what if I wanna simplify this? If I wanted to create a lambda function that tells me exactly that. I could take lambda, provide fruit as an input parameter, and then I need to determine the relationship uh, that I want between fruit and the number of days. So fruit divided by seven. Now I need to provide the input here, fruit. And there we go, 0.57 strawberries per day. Now I need to go up to formulas and I'm gonna define a name here and I'm gonna call this fruits per day. And then I'm gonna say it refers to Lambda fruit, fruit divided by, oops, divided by seven. Now I have a reusable function that I can type over and over again. Equals fruits per day, D10, and it gives me my output there. Or I can say fruits per day, and it will take any fruit that I input 
and divide that by seven. Do another example here. Fruits per day. How many peaches do I eat on average per day? 4.57. So there you go, it's really cool and I hope that you get some familiarity with it because there's really no limit to what you can do. And furthermore, Lambda functions really blur the line between what's Excel and what's code. Because previously, if you wanted to create your own function, you needed to do some VBA, you need to write some code with it. Lambda functions give you that ability, that power right in the Excel cell. So it's really cool what Microsoft has done here. So there it is. There are 11 Microsoft Excel functions that you can use to be more productive in your day. Put any questions, comments, or concerns you have below in the chat. I'd love to hear them. Thank you, and I always appreciate your feedback, so thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Do me a favor, don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thanks everybody, have a great day.